How do traumatic long-term events in childhood affect your health as an adult? The Adverse Childhood Questionnaire, or ACE, was created by scientists at Kaiser Permanente and the Centers for Disease Control to begin testing exactly that. In 1995 and 97, Felitti and Robert Anda from the CDC surveyed childhood trauma experiences of over 17,000 Kaiser Permanente patient volunteers. About half were female, nearly 75% were white. The average age was 57. 75% had attended college. All had jobs and health care. Participants were asked about different types of childhood trauma that had been identified in earlier research literature. The ACE study found that about two-thirds of individuals reported at least one adverse childhood experience. The number of ACEs was strongly associated with adult high-risk health behaviors such as smoking, alcohol and drug abuse, promiscuity, severe obesity, and correlated with ill health including depression, heart disease, cancer, chronic lung disease, and shortened lifespan. Compared to an ACE score of zero, having four adverse childhood experiences was associated with a 700% increase in alcoholism, a doubling of risk of being diagnosed with cancer, and a fourfold increase in emphysema. An ACE score of above six was associated with a 3,000% increase in attempted suicide. The impact of ACEs on children can manifest in difficulties focusing, self-regulating, trusting others, and can lead to negative cognitive effects. One study found that a child with four or more ACEs was 32 times more likely to be labeled with a behavioral or cognitive problem than a child with no ACEs. Another study by the Area Health Education Center of Washington State University found that students with at least three ACEs are three times as likely to experience academic failure, six times as likely to have behavioral problems, and five times as likely to have attendance problems. All that said, some people are resilient to trauma and abuse. Resilience and access to other resources are protective factors. Resiliency can come from having a caring adult in a child's life. Resiliency can come from having meaningful moments such as an academic achievement or getting praise from teachers or mentors. If you are an adult that never received those sources of resilience as a child, you have to learn to practice the concept of self-care. Self-care can mean a variety of things. One example is knowing when you are beginning to feel burned out and then taking a step back to rest and recuperate yourself. Another component is practicing mindfulness or engaging in some form of meditation. If you are able to take the time to reflect upon your experiences, then you will be able to build a greater level of resiliency moving forward. I will make a separate video going into more detail about self-care. The ACE test is just 10 questions. They are all yes or no answers. Just write down or count the number of times you answer yes. While you were growing up during your first 18 years of life, number one, did a parent or other adult in the household often swear at you, insult you, put you down, or humiliate you, or act in a way that made you afraid that you might be physically hurt? Number two, did a parent or other adult in the household often push, grab, slap, or throw something at you? or ever hit you so hard that you had marks or were injured. Number three, did an adult or person at least five years older than you ever touch or fondle you or have you touch their body in a sexual way or try to or actually have oral, anal, or vaginal sex with you? Number four, did you often feel that no one in your family loved you or thought you were important or special? or your family didn't look out for each other, feel close to each other, or support each other. Number five, did you often feel that you didn't have enough to eat, had to wear dirty clothes, and had no one to protect you? 
or your parents were too drunk or high to take care of you or take you to the doctor if needed it. Number six, were your parents ever separated or divorced? Number seven, was your mother or stepmother often pushed, grabbed, slapped, or had something thrown at her? Or sometimes were often kicked, bitten, hit with a fist, or hit with something hard? Or ever repeatedly hit over at least a few minutes or threatened with a gun or knife? Number eight, did you live with anyone who was a problem drinker or alcoholic who used street drugs? Number nine, was a household member depressed or mentally ill, or did a household member attempt suicide? Number ten, did a household member go to prison? If you answered yes to any of the questions, then you may have some degree of damage from your childhood. It doesn't necessarily mean you have complex post-traumatic stress disorder or CPTSD. The ACE test is just a crude diagnostic tool and shouldn't be a substitute for meeting with a licensed therapist. It wasn't designed to be a screener for CPTSD. If you answered yes to some of the questions, it's worth investigating that possible diagnosis further. From the many tests and evidence, it's clear a high portion of people have some amount of childhood trauma. Most are able to function in life to a high enough degree that they never question why they do the negative things they do. Resiliency they develop as children from positive sources also contribute to them finding ways to function in society. All the same, their past has adverse effects on their lives and those around them. On that point, if your adult life is chaotic and dysfunctional like mine, we have an advantage. Our lives have been so disrupted, so non-functional, that we have no other choice but to try to figure out why. When we do the work of healing, in the end, we will be a person with greater empathy than most around us. That new awareness can help us change the world for better, so others won't have to go through what we went through. As far as the dire effects brought on by childhood trauma, they are not set in stone. The sooner you begin healing, the less those effects accumulate. If you are watching this, then you are actively working on educating yourself. As always, be patient. Give yourself credit for even the smallest of victories. Making these videos is difficult for me, but I'm doing it anyway. I'm not going to let my fears rule me. For that, I give myself credit and praise. That's my tip for you today. The new tool for your toolbox. Try to learn to praise yourself. I am great at tearing myself down. No one needs to do it. I've already thought of everything they will say and said it to myself. What I'm not good at, but working on, is giving myself credit. Thanking myself for the positive things I do. Maybe that is something that resonates with you also. If so, leave a message in the comments below.